Um, good morning and hello to everybody. Welcome to the first Panachair Research webinar on delivering people-centric cybersecurity solutions in healthcare. Um, we have um, a great lineup of speakers this morning, bringing a mix of expertise from the healthcare sector and from cybersecurity um, testing and, and certification. Um, I think a key message to start this webinar is that when it comes to cybersecurity, there is no other sector in the world that is more at risk than the healthcare sector. And why is this? This is because um, it's a treasure trove of highly sensitive data, very personal data, and also because the um, healthcare not being a typical or traditional IT sector, it has a lot of weak defenses. And the impacts of cyber attacks are well known with high societal and economic impacts, including like the dis interruption of healthcare services and emergency services, um, putting lives at risk, yeah, or putting the health or, and well being at risk of many people who need um, hospital care on a regular or emergency basis. Um, also, um, the other risks of data when data is stolen through a cyber attack or a data breach is that the risk of um, identity theft or the um, data being used for fraud and other malicious purposes, um, including you know data being sold on the on the black cyber market. So it's time that we really started to make a difference um, and build defences that help protect and put the patients right at the very heart of healthcare services. So with me today, are, we have three panelists. First of all, we have Pasquale Mari, who is um, representing the famous Agostino Gemelli Hospital in Rome. Um, since 1987, Pasquale has been working as a management consultant with um, Deloitte Consulting, Capgemini and um, PwC. Waterhouse Cooper. He um, currently operates as or works as a freelance consultant working with the Gemelli um, Hospital in the context of um, research and innovation projects. Um, after Pasquale, we'll be hearing more um, views from a cybersecurity expert, Matteo Marialdo, who is from the REA um, cybersecurity and cyber range um, company called REA. Um, Matteo is a software architecture and project manager um, within this company and he brings capabilities in managing large and very complex software projects as in the case of Panachair Research. And finally we will be welcoming Ivan Tesfai from Rena C um, which is an expert in testing inspection and certification. Um, Ivan is the technical coordinator of um, Rena um, C activities. Um, he brings a lot of expertise in various industrial and European co-funded research projects um, like Horizon 2020, which is the funding program for Panacea Research as a European-wide initiative. Um, Ivan provides you know, carries out engineering activities, scientific and technical coordination with insights into the business opportunities of enabling technologies like cybersecurity and how they can be effectively applied to sectors such as the healthcare. Okay, so with no further ado, I will we will pass the floor to Pasquale for his um, views on um, why we need a, a, a human-centered approach to healthcare and cybersecurity. Um, and then obviously after we've listened to all of our three speakers, we'll, be, we'll, we'll open the floor to questions from the audiences. Okay, so I will welcome very much and thank you, Pasquale. Please, um, please start your presentation and, and share the, your views with us. Uh, good morning to everyone. Pasquale speaking, and uh, I hope you can see my. Hello. Hello, pa we can see. We're confirming that we can see your screen. Can I share projects and okay. opportunities for collaboration? Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank. You. Okay. So thank you. I, I we start my my presentation, and. Uh, um, 
the title of the presentation is, as you see, Project Panacea Project and uh, its opportunities for collaboration. What we will do now? Uh, I will provide you with an helicopter view of the project. Uh, three topics, uh, provide a summary of the key features of the project, so what, uh, how the project is organized, then what the project will produce, so the description of the what the project has to deliver, and then uh, we will provide rapidly a glimpse on the reimpress on the approach to collaboration with stakeholders. Uh, what is the project mandate? The project, this is a, a Horizon 2020 project, uh, and, uh, it, and it was born according to a, a topic, a call, and in the call, the key things were the ones that you see here. So, first of all, what was the topic of the call? The topic of the call was deliver a toolkit for assessing and reducing cyber risks in hospitals and care centers to protect the privacy, data, and infrastructure. So, this means that the scope was in the healthcare, but not only in the hospitals, but also in the territorial healthcare. Uh, uh, the, the, the scope of the project is to develop and implement innovative methods, tools, guidelines. So, uh, as was phrased at the scope, uh, our interpretation was that uh, not only technology was involved you know, in terms of uh, solutions, but also other aspects, methods, tools, guidelines, and as we, you will see, I will tell you, uh, we also included the human factor in it. And uh, we, I will tell you in which sense we, we do this. The expected impact are not only privacy, uh, as it is uh, customary today, GDPR is everywhere, but not only privacy for the data, but also uh, security in terms of uh, continuity of the business and safety of the patients. So this is uh, this is the main the main uh, uh, mandate for for the project. Uh, so what we did we we last last year we submitted the proposal and we built a consortium. Now uh, the project has started. The project started in January this year, and the consortium is up and running and is made up of fifteen uh, participants. Uh, partners. The 15 partners are listed here, and you may see uh, th their variety. Uh, what I want to highlight is that we have uh, ac academy, meaning that we have research both in the technology and in uh, psychology. Uh, the technology is mainly uh, led by University of Rome, while the, the uh, and, and by also by FORTH, uh, which is a research center. And uh, the, the University of uh, Northumbria at Newcastle uh, is leading the research in psychology on the human factor aspects. Uh, the key features are the, these ones, so seven countries, uh, five million uh, uh, euro, uh, three year long, many deliverables, more than 20 scientific papers to produce and contribution also. Uh, to the um, uh, standard to, to standardization. Also, in the budget we have two hundred thousand euro um, that are there available for open call. I will explain you later what does it mean. Uh, what we will do with this money? What is the output of the project? The output of the project uh, is this one. We will deliver a suite of technological and organizational tools. So it is a, a set of tools intended to help the users to assess and reduce the vulnerability to several attacks of their system in scope. Here I use the term system in scope because this system in scope may, may be of three types. The first type, the main one, are the healthcare providers. So, and here we have a variety of situations to which we refer, single hospital, group of hospitals, and healthcare region. As you may have seen in the previous slide here, uh, we have three end users. One is the Policlinico Gemelli in Rome, Italy. Then we have the uh, Greek uh, uh, region, health region of Crete. And then we have a group of seven hospitals from the Ireland. And this is a, uh, and so we will deal with this type of situations. But also, 
the system in scope is not only the healthcare providers as a, a hospital, for instance, but also medical device life cycle and ICT systems life cycle. Because uh, one purpose of, of uh, one request for the, from the topic was to take care also on the security by design aspects. So this means that we will take care also of this type of objects, let's say. The, um, when we say system in scope, we mean that it is made up not only of technology, but also of people and organization. And this is true for every, every one of the three systems in scope that we have seen. And then we have, uh, what is the solution? The solution is made up of two subset, a solution toolkit and a delivery toolkit. I will tell you in a moment uh, what does it mean. What, uh, what I want to highlight is that the components in the solution toolkit are both technical and non-technical. And here we are. So what is the solution toolkit? The solution toolkit is a set of uh, uh, tools. In, in total, we have uh, seven tools. And these seven tools are made up of three subsets. The first subset are the technological tools, and they deal as you see, with dynamic risk assessment tool, secure information sharing, and security by design certification, and solutions for identification and authentication. There are also three non-technical, non-technological tools that we call them organizational. This means training and education packages. The resilience governance means organization for cybersecurity, mainly, and uh, Last but not least, the secure behavior is nudging, meaning that here we will find solutions um, in order to find, uh, to make, to, to, to op operate on the people, in order, to, in order to get from them secure behaviors. This is why the University of Northumbria, uh, the psychology department, is part of, of the project. The system, uh, the, 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 the environment on which uh, the solution will be used uh, uh, is this one. Suppose that uh, this, uh, this area, central area, is the hospital. Okay? In this hospital, we have people, operators, citizens, patients, employees, etc. These people are uh, doing things. They do processes, for it, they, clinical processes, uh, administrative processes, uh, processes that uh, involve the use of medical devices. There will be systems, I mean information system for clinical part, administrative information system and the devices themselves, connected devices with their software, etc. So what is uh, the role of the toolkit? The toolkit is, is operating is in the center here, is to uh, provide the people and to influence the people uh, means uh, in order to, to, to uh, defend against uh, cyber attacks uh, the systems and the processes, all the ones that are here. Oh, this is uh, the one hospital, let's say. It can be connected also with external entities like other hospitals. The hospital on the left have the same types of defense. The, the uh, items, the uh, entities on the right uh, do not have defenses. So we should consider also this situation. So this is a, the, the full environment. So let me go on with the illustrating the toolkit. As I said, the toolkit, there are two toolkits. One is a solution toolkit. Another one is a delivery toolkit. Delivery toolkit is a companion of the solution toolkit. Uh, you know, it, it is a, something equivalent to the IKEA instructions that you have when you, you buy the kit of IKEA pieces. No? Uh, how to mount, how to build up the, the shelf, for instance. You need instructions. So the idea is that the project produces also uh, two uh, tools dedicated to, to the use and the installation of the toolkit. So, uh, and it is made up of two, set, two things. One is the ROI evaluation methodology. It is a return on investment evaluation methodology. It is a tool that is meant to be used by the management of a hospital, for instance. The management of the hospital want to understand why should I buy this solution? Why should I install it, install it, okay? And so it is necessary to have a methodology. The idea is to build up a methodology to, to make, uh, to, to, so that the management can decide. Uh, the second kit, the second tool is this implementation guidelines. They are in the mounting instructions look, using the same metaphor of the IKEA. 
The project, the Panacea project, is a research and innovation project. In the language of the European Union, this means that there must be a research part. And in this project, we have a relevant and important research part. And we have just started in these days to work in this area. Here you see uh, that uh, for everyone, or, or at least uh, we would just one exception, for everyone of, of, the, of the elements, uh, we have elements of research. So uh, here you see the items on which there will be research. There will be technical research, models for healthcare data, secure information sharing, threat modeling. There will be the, the biometric, uh, biometric uh, uh, recognition uh, systems. There, there is also, and this is why the color is different, uh, research on the human factor. And there will be some research on the decision models that individuals, the nurse, the medical doctor, for instance, the administrative staff in, the, in an hospital, how, what is their decision model and how we can influence their decision models in order so that they take the right decision in what to do when they have to do with uh, information technology, medical devices, for instance. Okay. Uh, Matteo will te you tell more on, on, this, uh, on this research. Uh, the idea is that the project has an innovation, innovation potential. The innovation potential is uh, twofold. First thing there is that we will develop new approaches. We think that our solution is holistic and this is something new. I mean, everyone says, but uh, uh, to implement this is not uh, not easy so the idea is to face to, to 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 accept this challenge and the project will go on in finding a holistic approach to cyber security putting together human behavior technology and processes also it is impact oriented as i said we will provide for instance the the roi methodology return on investment methodology and this is an example uh, we have also new types of solutions, automatic generation of non-technical mitigation actions. So, as Matteo will explain better to you, uh, the assessment tool will not only uh, identify the weaknesses uh, or the vulnerabilities of the technology, but uh, uh, and provide the mitigation actions, uh, technology mitigation actions, but we will also uh, assess the entire human technology system and provide mitigations on both sides. Also, uh, the new thing is uh, a focused attention to the secure behavior nudging. So, as I said uh, to you, the part that is uh, uh, developing, uh, uh, using the psychology know-how, psychology know-how of uh, the University of North Umbria. The University of North Umbria will work together with the Hospital of Gemelli, together with the Crete region, together with the Irish hospitals, in order to localize the methodology of the behavior nudging in this uh, environment. The project will last three years. It is structured in one packages. The threads uh, are, are the nine uh, tools and we will go on through the typical steps of requirement, research, development, uh, in, uh, preparation of the testing and testing. So work package number seven is the testing and we will do it in Gemelli, Crete and in, in Ireland. Okay. So this is uh, how we will uh, have a structure. Now we are in work package one. We have just started work package two. Work package one, we, are, we have modeled the realities of uh, healthcare systems, life, life cycle of devices, medical devices, and uh, of uh, information system. And building on this, we will go on with the project in uh, specifying the end user requirement. And then we will do the, the according to the search and so on. Last item of the, my presentation is the fact that to do this type of project we need the support of stakeholders and this is why we are doing this webinar for instance not only for dissemination purposes uh, but also because we we want solicit we want to get help by the stakeholder because we want that our solution is uh, uh, robust from the point of view of many stakeholders here you see the, a variety of typologies we have eight groups and you can read what they are and you can position yourself and the idea is that the stakeholder can um, can be involved uh, would like to be involved because they, they we expect that they get something from being stakeholders for interfacing with the project but they are also useful for us 
because we need, for instance, a user perspective on the pro on what we will do. Uh, we have different uh, methods of involvement. One of these methods uh, will use the 200,000 euros that I told you before. We will do uh, uh, open calls in order to, to get the direct participation of some uh, of stakeholders uh, so that we pay for their time and their involvement uh, because we will need them for our uh, to, to have good use cases. And so uh, in, in the future, uh, we are going to do this type of activities. But uh, um, Ivan, Ivan will tell you more on this. Uh, I close here my presentation. I hope uh, to have been uh, clear. Uh, we have a, a question and answer session uh, at the end of the seminar. So I, I, I'm ready to, to answer. Thank you very much to everyone. Um, thank you, Pascale. I think there was a few key takeaways from this presentation. I think one of these is, you know, how hospitals and healthcare centres um, fun have this fundamental societal role in um, ensuring resilience and continuation of the services. I think that was a critical infrastructure. Um, I think also one of the other takeaways was the importance of um, what we refer to as the holistic approach, which in this context, looking at not looking right across the organizations involved in the supply chains. Um, so we consider, you know, the, uh, the clinical processes, the role of the devices, you know, in an and the supply chain, you know, and considering that we, we live in an increasingly connected world, so it's very important that devices are also, or, or to reduce the, the cyber vulnerabilities of devices, which are very important also for the personalization of healthcare and for self-care as well. Um, um, I think also on top of this, you know, adding the, um, bringing in uh, the um, administrative processes and the, behavioural um, aspects through training and education and the um, decision modelling of all, all very important aspects. And I think um, we'll be talking more about this later on, the opportunities for other stakeholders with a high um, in a invested interest in planetary research to come along and contribute actively and really ensure that um, every, a lot of more people benefit from the results and the opportunities for uptake. So I will now pass the floor to Matteo, who will be talking to us about innovative cybersecurity solutions in healthcare. Thank you, Matteo. Hello? Okay. Can see your screen, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. I was um, I was still muted. So hello everybody. Matteo Merialdo. I work as a project manager within um, uh, Real System, which is a company that work, works primarily in the space domain and the cybersecurity domain. Within the context of uh, uh, Panacea, I work as technical project manager, so coordinating all the technical and scientific uh, coordination and management. So I. I will continue from uh, uh, what Pasquale was saying before about uh, the innovations that we put within uh, our proposal for the Panacea project. And if you recall, uh, we are envisioning this, uh, this toolkit, which is composed by a set of, uh, a set of tools, uh, not necessarily uh, to be used all together uh, in the same healthcare institution, but the idea is that they will be composed uh, uh, given the demand, uh, let's say. So, um, there are some areas in, in where we would like to to improve the state of the art. So we start from the state of the art, and we would like to go to go further. So, for example, in the area of the dynamic risk assessment and mitigation, which is very technical because it will be based on the IT infrastructure of the healthcare institution, as we will see later. What we would like is to be able to consider um, multiple dimensions of uh, of threats. So not only technical vulnerabilities and 
technical attack path, but also organizational kind of uh, vulnerabilities uh, uh, in relationship to the to the business and to the structure of the organization, and possibly, if we can, to the human behavior up to a certain point at least. And the same uh, will be for the response management. Uh, we would like really to have uh, uh, technical and non-technical uh, uh, mitigation actions coming out from our engine. And then uh, we are going to explore advanced vision analytics for um, for the dynamic risk assessment engine that we are going to to develop because uh, situational awareness is one of the most important things for what regards uh, for uh, IT managers, for example, or uh, secure operation centers and so forth. For what regards uh, the secure information sharing, um, we identify a need to uh, share healthcare information in a secure way, cross-border, multi-tenants and so forth. So we're going to develop a tool for doing that. And of course, the innovation here is related to how to manage with different uh, legislations and policies in different countries, even within the EU. And we are also going to explore the possible usage of blockchain, private blockchain probably, for secure information sharing. So they are really useful in this context or not? It's uh, an open question. For what regards secure behaviors, behaviors decision models and influencers, so nudging, we are going to use them to study and to use them in order to understand how to improve the security posture of uh, an healthcare organization by applying uh, these kind of methods and potentially we would like to extract uh, nudges from uh, uh, the dynamic risk assessment um, engine that we're going to build as uh, human let's say mitigation actions and then we are also going to explore uh, novel models for the identification of patients and uh, healthcare professionals. So going a little bit more into the details, uh, those ideas that you saw in the previous slide will be transferred into a set of technical tools, so really uh, software that we are going to develop within the project itself. Some of them are based on existing software developed in context of other research projects, so we, would, we are building from, from the past because we want to improve the past and also because we would like to reach at least a technical readiness level um, six in reality some of the tools may be able to to reach an higher technical uh, readiness level which will be good so the core so the, the most complex of the four applications that we're going to develop is this dynamic risk management platform and um, the idea is uh, to develop a platform for monitoring the IT infrastructure of, a, of an organization for performing a continuous monitoring of the IT infrastructure, but also considering organizational inputs, so how the organization is structured, how the humans, uh, up to a certain point, we need to see how much we can go deep into that, how the humans, uh, the professionals that work there, are uh, a vulnerability for the system itself, and so forth. Um, the idea is that the, the risk assessment will be dynamic in order to provide a continuous proactive view of uh, the risk of the IT infrastructure in relationship to the business processes of uh, the healthcare organization. We are going to develop the secure information sharing platform for uh, <clears throat> sharing healthcare information, as I was saying, cross-border, multi-tenants, uh, and possibly using blockchain technologies for uh, for the sharing uh, for managing the data let's say um, we are going to explore security by design with the, in particular with the relationship to um, medical devices and in general uh, systems uh, in, in related to to the healthcare world uh, so we are going to to develop this uh, this tool for uh, providing uh, um, security by design benefits and security by design features that could be used in order to develop new medical system medical devices and then the our identity management platform uh, is going to explore and to implement novel methods for um, providing identity to patients to professionals but also to iot devices in relationship to the medical uh, medical devices the medical uh, ecosystem so for what regards the dynamic risk management platform the idea is that the platform will be continuously running within the system in order to uh, ingest the data from different data sources, could be public repositories of vulnerabilities, technical vulnerabilities, uh, knowledge of threats, so for example threat models that we can embed, that we can, uh, we can use within the system. Um, then data <clears throat> 
about the structure of the of the network itself so for example using a network management system or an asset management system as an input and then vulnerability scanners but not only because we would like also to embed and to ingest organizational structure um, and business structure and potentially at least up to a certain point, uh, human behavior. So the idea is uh, to collect all this data, to normalize all this data in a dynamic way, and then use this data in order to model, um, to analyze our threat models and to extract uh, our attack graph. Uh, of course, the idea is that the attack graph will be multidimensional because they will not cover only technical vulnerabilities, but also different layers of, um, um, of possible uh, threat models. And then the idea is that the, the system, in dependence to the level of risk, which we would like to keep a single risk evaluation, so not multiple risk evaluation depending on the, on the dimension, but we would like to have a single risk evaluation. And from that, we are going to extract technical and non-technical uh, mitigation actions, probably encompassed within, uh, within plans uh, of complex set of mitigation actions. Um, so from the technical side, um, so the analysis of the technical vulnerabilities, we are uh, uh, basing our, um, our work on the results of a previous uh, FP7 project, which was called Panoptesec, which was able to collect information from the network to reconstruct uh, the vulnerability surface, to reconstruct the network map. But in addition, we are also going to um, acquire business and governance models what we are going to use in order to extract uh, non-technical mitigation action, let's say. Um, something that was important uh, in the, our previous experience uh, was uh, the tight relationship between uh, the assets of the infrastructure and the business processes in order to evaluate uh, in a quantitative way the business impact. Um, so we are going to use a similar engine, probably we're going to refine it because the idea is that we really would like to have a quantitative analysis of the impact over the organization given the compromission of one or more, one or more assets. What we are going to develop as a novel also from a technical uh, perspective um, is we are going to develop a novel uh, attack graph engine in order to compute uh, all the possible path of attack not only as I was saying uh, on the technical perspective so path uh, encompassing multiple vulnerabilities and then uh, um, exploits of vulnerability up to the to the critical assets defined by the business model um, but also trying to encompass in the attack graph the multi-dimensional uh, perspective that uh, that I was talking about uh, before before. So we see will be that part will be particularly interesting also because there are uh, computational problems, scalability problems uh, that will be from an engineering perspective will be quite interest to, interesting to, to solve. So our attack graph uh, should be multidimensional and should be able then to allow us to compute the, the risk of a single or each of a single path and then of the organization itself uh, in uh, as overall. And from uh, um, from the attack graph and the risk related to, to each of the single path or to group of paths depending on uh, uh, how we want to do it, we will be able to extract mitigation action with the, the goal of reduce the risk of course, but if possible we would like also to provide some uh, economic evaluation of the effectiveness uh, in, in a cost-benefit uh, perspective of the mitigation actions themselves. Something else that we want to add here is uh, uh, the business impact of the, mi the mitigation action themselves, because uh, in some critical in some critical infrastructure you cannot really uh, act in a way by which uh, some uh, servers, for example, uh, are going to be down in order to patch them. You need to act in a way by which the risk is, is, is reduced, but your uh, uh, impact to the operations is uh, is still low. And that's, that's <clears throat> what we are going to explore, the evaluation of the business, uh, of the, the operational impact uh, of mitigation actions uh, to, the, to the infrastructure itself. What we would like to extract, uh, as I was saying, as non-technical measure, uh, will be measure related uh, to, the, to the nudging, so secure behavior, how to improve the secure behavior if uh, it's resulting, uh, it seems to be faulting uh, within the organization. And then, of course, uh, organizational and governance uh, mitigation action if something in the organization needs to change in order to be more resilient from a security perspective. So this is going to be fun, probably. Um, and that was the dynamic risk management platform. 
uh, the secure information sharing platform is going to address a completely different set of problems, but still related, of course. Uh, the idea is that uh, healthcare organization, especially in the European Union, may need to talk to each other, may need to share data, but there are technical and also uh, legislative uh, um, boundaries uh, quite strict. So our idea is to develop a tool that will be able to adapt to the single country and even the single region in a country um, legislation issue about uh, sharing healthcare data and in order to, to provide the best solution possible for still performing that kind of action. Um, it will be based on, um, on a work that has been already uh, perform within a project for the for the space agency for for sharing a cyber uh, uh, cyber incident information and the idea is that we will have a very flexible data model and we will be able to adapt to different legislation thanks to this uh, extremely adaptable uh, data model and then everything will be customizable in order to be as much adaptable as as possible the tool in itself will be gdpr compliant as the, the beginning but then we will need to be able to adapt uh, to the single realities since we have uh, our pilots are free hospital in three different countries with different uh, structure because we have a big hospital uh, in italy we have a set of hospitals uh, in greece uh, and uh, in ireland so we will be be able to test uh, different situation where our uh, secure information sharing platform will be used. Um, within the CISP we are going also to explore the usage of blockchain for uh, storing the shared information. So data integrity and of course uh, in confidentiality and availability is one of the main problems uh, when uh, um, when data are shared between uh, collaborating but independent parties because uh, the data owners uh, they they have hardly control on them, so it's not a, a super easy problem to solve. We are going to try to explore the usage of blockchain, maybe not for uh, directly storing the data, but for storing metadata, storing the transactions, uh, we see. What is interesting is that our approach is very open in the sense that if we will really deem uh, and the, the end user will really deem that the usage of blockchain makes sense in this case, uh, we are going for that. Otherwise, uh, the traditional means uh, could be absolutely sufficient. Um, for what regards security by design, so our security design support platform, uh, the concept is related to the fact that uh, security by design is more and more important nowadays because uh, uh, systems are becoming extremely complex and uh, that is true for space domain, naval domain, but also for the healthcare domain. So if you can adopt a proper security by design uh, uh, posture of course uh, at the end uh, your system will be more secure and you will spend less money on trying to add the security at uh, the last moment so how to do that there are several techniques uh, we are going to uh, check the existing frameworks and policies but one of the most effective ways for doing it and uh, it's an approach that's been already um, adopted by the space agency is to perform uh, security risk assessment over the different phases of the life cycle of the of a device or a system so at the end of each phase planning phase requirements phase design phase test phase and so forth um, the tool that we're going to develop will help this, the, the system architect to perform a security risk assessment in order to extract new security requirements to embed in the system. So in this way, the system architect will, will have a justification for the level of security that needs to be embedded in the system itself. So we are going to develop this, uh, this tool. And uh, last but not least, our identity management platform will be based on a novel concept. So we would like to combine uh, biometric features and digital signature uh, by the, the patient or the healthcare professional mobile device. So in this way, we would have a two-factor authentication. And then from that master key, let's say, we are going to derive uh, multiple secondary digital, uh, digital identities for uh, all, all the applications that we want, not necessarily the application developed within Panacea, but also existing application in the hospital. Um, we are going to explore the user, uses of blockchain in order to store the transactions, because that could be interesting, of course, and it's already done by others, but uh, in this case could be interesting. And the idea is that we are going to apply the plat this platform to existing systems within our pilots or to the new, to the new systems that we are going to develop uh, within the project itself and uh, I'm done thank you very much
Thank you very much, Matteo. Okay. I think a couple of I think one of the main takeaways from this presentation is how you know the, the efforts to overcome the engineering and technical challenges have key implications and very positive impacts from a, a, a user perspective. Yeah, because it's all about connecting people to better healthcare and more secure healthcare. Um, you know, we think about the opportunities and the positive societal impacts of being able to share securely data across borders you know and we see every day all too often unfortunately you know public disasters and um, emergency situations where we really do need to have medical teams and all other first responders really um, with the very best tools that the that technology can offer, yeah, including um, resilience against cyber attacks and cyber risks. So thank you, Matteo. Well, now, without further ado, pass on to Ivan, who will be talking to us about actually engaging the users in people-centric solutions development. So I'll pass the floor to you, Ivan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear, and we can see your presentation on screen. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, Ivan Tesfai from uh, Arena Consulting, and I'm going to present you uh, how uh, we are we have in mind to engage users actively to provide uh, feedback, to provide an understanding uh, of the main needs from uh, a stakeholders' point of view uh, in Panacea project. So basically, what I give it to you is a is a framework of the activities to engage users uh, in Panacea throughout uh, the project phases. Uh, uh, over mentioned before. Um, then will be a focus on end user and stakeholder platform, which is uh, uh, the main, uh, let's say, the cornerstone of how we are going to interact with the users uh, uh, and giving to you basically the, the, the basic information of what it is, uh, how formally interact with the project members, and so on. Who are uh, the users and stakeholders in Panacea with a, uh, let's say, specific uh, uh, mentioned to their, to their profile and what they are supposed to do, which kind of role they have and uh, how their, their information are treated. Finally, I uh, will conclude which, uh, with, with, with the, which are the communication channels to involve them and uh, with some key information about the first uh, uh, end user and stakeholder workshop that will be done uh, in May. So basically with the first point, uh, the activities are basically built up on three main points. One is the building of uh, and the management of the end user stakeholder platform. Uh, we are going to uh, define which are the mechanism and the working guidelines uh, in order to uh, establish which is the framework of, uh, of interaction with them. Uh, we, we are managing uh, the enrolling of new member and regularly maintain uh, and update it uh, these members throughout uh, uh, different kind of uh, information and form of information we, we are preparing during the project uh, with the goal to build a hub for receiving specific requests and feedback that we need for the development of our project solutions and our results. Uh, uh, trying to establish and, and keep uh, uh, the focus uh, on the real operational need of the stakeholders. Then, uh, once we build this sort of stakeholder pool, we would like to establish and maintain an enlarged uh, network that the, the members of the stakeholder platform uh, can have. And leveraging on the content of the pool, we can create a target destination for the dissemination activities. Finally, uh, we have uh, um, a third level in order, uh, in order to ensure from uh, uh, operational perspective, the validation of uh, what we are developing, basically. So the project result of, the, of, the, um, of, uh, of what we are developing, developing. ensuring uh, a relevant and varied participation of the stakeholder to the what's so-called open calls, and managing the related procurement process uh, using a pre-allocated budget. So the main output that we have in mind is to gather feedback, on scenario scoping that we have, the definition of relevant use cases, and elicitation of requirements. So how the uh, users are engaged in the project? As you can see, there are pretty much, uh, let's say, um, distributed over the phases of the project. 
So um, basically, we are uh, using uh, uh, the so-called in system engineering V model that the composites uh, on the development and the performance uh, parts and integrated them through subsequent uh, loops. We are using this because we would like to adapt to the complexity of the project and uh, uh, its phases and the need of incorporating users feedback. Uh, as you can see by the picture, um, the V proceed down and then up from left to the right. Um, testing and developing software functionalities are related and occur as parallel activities enabling the changes uh, to occur more dynamically. In such a way, preliminary version of the software components will be available early in the project for testing as a standalone versions and to be envisioned somehow to the, to the users, uh, not uh, at the end of the development of the solutions. Uh, whilst the final versions will be available for demonstration and validation purposes. So, um, as you can see, uh, the user engagement uh, is, is covering uh, the so-called uh, set uh, operational and uh, research context. So starting with the initial phase of the project, we will focus on collection and understanding of operational needs from users, definition of appropriate uh, scenarios uh, and research topics. And then, as mentioned before by, by Matteo Merialdo, those requirements will be transformed into technical and technical specification. Then will be clearly the design integration with, where the focus of the design and development of Panacea solutions, covering all the, the, the building block um, uh, explained uh, very well in the presentation before. A series then of unitary tests will be performed, ensuring uh, performance and operability of individual components. And at the end, we have the verification and validation that aims at demonstrating and validating the project results, ensuring the fulfillment of user requirements over the three configuration of healthcare uh, centers that we uh, have already involved in the project. Uh, there will start from a, from a verification phase, uh, achieving a progressive integration of the components uh, and each step towards full validation. And then we will uh, ensure the user acceptance by the so-called securing impact, where sustainable impact and user benefits will be uh, the target by engaging end user external to the consortium to collect feedback and, and on, on the progressive release and to validate the project concept. Um, what is the end user and stakeholder platform and how it is uh, included in the project? So basically, uh, the cornerstones of the Panacea organizational structure will be three. Uh, one uh, is the engagement of the stakeholders to create support and commitments um, and commitments and to reduce resistance. Um, the second is the planning and, and monitoring of the benefits to be achieved for the end users through the project output. And third, clearly, is the motivation of team members and all who are contributing to the project. So basically, uh, the main, the main um, uh, part of this organizational structure is the General Assembly of the Partners, where it is basically the governing body of the project making of a, uh, for approving a fundamental decision. This is, let's say, helped from uh, three points of view. One, basically, from the scientific and technical committee, uh, basically oversight all the scientific and technical um, activities of the project, and the innovation exploitation committee giving a screen of the commercial exploitable outcomes and give input to the correct and proper business model and strategies uh, in this do in the healthcare domain. And then clearly we have uh, the so-called external ethics review board and security advisory board to ensure ethics and security clearance, compliance with national and international directives, standards and clauses, and clearly have a timely point out any of any ethical, legal and security issue related to the project demonstration and validation. Um, as you can see, uh, the, uh, all this, let's say, uh, information, this governing body is uh, oversight by the project management board, which in this, at this level, is interacting with end user and stakeholder platform. Uh, the, stakeholder plat uh, the stakeholder platform is built up uh, of, uh, of eight stakeholder groups, uh, basically the one represent represented in this picture, and uh, they could be grouped, let's say, in three uh, main domains. One, hospitals, which are the direct users and patients, in order to um, ensure a balance among who are delivering uh, the service uh, in the healthcare domain and who are basically benefiting uh, of, of, this, of these services. 
the second level is industry and research in order to have a balance among uh, the state of art and, and what we are um, basically ensure uh, as the most innovative solution in cybersecurity, both for cybersecurity and healthcare domain. And finally, we have a part of the policy makers and standard developing organization in order to ensure compliance to national and international directives. Uh, what they are supposed to do with respect to Panacea? Basically, two main roles. Uh, one is uh, um, advisory role. We basically provide user needs, advices to project partners uh, regarding uh, their requirements and dissemination or networking uh, with, uh, with uh, um, uh, any member of, uh, of, the, um, of the stakeholder community. So the main, uh, let's say, uh, way uh, we uh, would like to interact is the participation to project workshops, accessing, commenting, and supplementing interim findings uh, and results of the project. A second role is uh, the one uh, um, uh, covering the validation phase. So um, the external end user is very important because they acting as an independent validator of the project solution. So they can provide the feedbacks on the usability of the demonstrated technology um, uh, in order to ensure somehow the robustness of, uh, of what we have developed. Um, and in this case, the member of the stakeholders uh, and user stakeholders platform can be involved or can eventually host a piloting actions. And how this information are treated uh, basically uh, have from one side a, um, uh, a useful exchange of information, resourceful exchange of information, and on the, upper, on the other side, ensuring the security and the confidentiality of the information given to to us. Basically, all the stakeholder platform members uh, will need to sign a bilateral uh, non-disclosure agreement with project coordination. And this way, we will ensure the security of project information and other any kind of information released and kept confidential or restricted. So how we would like to involve the end user. Basically, we are acting on three levels of involvement. One is basically to raise awareness, inform. Inform via newsletters, updates, um, releases, or software release, and so on, beta release, and so on. Um, in this way, we are, we, we are trying to um, support the dissemination of project outcomes over a uh, the overall community uh, in of Panacea, so healthcare, cybersecurity, and so on. Uh, the second level is engagement. Engagement through discussions, through interviews, to workshop, and so on. We foresee three uh, workshops, uh, one for the elicitation of user requirements, uh, what I mentioned before, but I explained just, I give it to you key information on, this, on the last slide, uh, next slide, last slide. Uh, one related to the first round of user feedback about the initial prototype that we released, and a final one regarding a user feedback with, uh, with final prototypes. And at the end, we have the deepest, let's say, um, level of involvement, which is participate. Participate to the open course in order to support, as I said, a stronger validation phase of project outcomes. Finally, a little focus and uh, some key information for your interest. Uh, we are organizing the first end user and stakeholder workshop uh, uh, to be uh, to may to be uh, made in uh, held in, in Rome, Italy, uh, in in Fondazione Policlinico uh, Gemelli uh, by the end of May. So the scope is the presentation of Panacea project and the very first findings to the community, public findings, which will be the models of health services and of medical devices life cycle for cybersecurity. Then in, together with the stakeholders, we would like to discuss and identify from one side cybersecurity needs in healthcare system. And from the other side, try to learn from the experience of the stakeholders in building reliable use cases um, realistic use cases and build representative scenarios uh, for our application. The outcomes of this workshop will be the licitation of requirements from the three main categories of users we will target in. Regulatory bodies, basically, healthcare facilities and organizations, and providers, providers of devices and providers of ICT systems. So uh, I really thank you for your attention and I'm fully open to the questions that you, that you can raise.
Okay, thank you very much, um, Ivan. I think a key takeaway from this presentation is the um, highly collaborative approach that Panacea is adopting, um, including, you know, span, you know, with engagement right from in, in, across every step of the project, in, including collecting independent advice and feedback, and opportunities to co-create and co-validate the solutions through the open calls. Um, and I think this is um, a very nice approach, you know, and it goes back to that people-centric um, priority that um, Panachea puts also into the development as well, for, so from a technical perspective. Um, I think we just to wrap up, we're ready. We have a couple of a few questions from the audience. If I could just step in and answer the first one about the standardization. Um, we'd just like to say that we are Panachea Research. We'll look into the most relevant work that is taking place within the standard development organizations in the medical sector. Um, we are also um, we, work, we are well aware of Etsy Cyber and the other uh, work in Etsy because we also bring in the experiences of 5G security through the 5G Ensure project and a cloud project um, called Clara Secure that looked which had a use case on um, cloud security in hospital settings. So and to add on to that, we are also part of the ongoing work within the 5G public-private partnership. So we're working very um, closely with and on the 3GPP um, standardization work, including new items um, for critical medical applications. So, you know, this is, we're definitely um, have an invested interest from a standard perspective. Um, I'll, I'll let um, Christina, I'm, um, put to the floor um, the second question. So over to you, Christina, and then I think Ivan um, can re reply to this question. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, Stephen. Um, Christina, can you read out the question for us, please? Okay. Uh, there should be a question related to the evolution of Cybersecurity Act, and they will label security of a product or service. Does the consortium have a view on the level of assurance of medical devices and services that should be obtained? For example, will cell certification be recommended? Um, yes, the, basically the answer is, is, is yes for, by basically two main uh, activities that we foreseen in, in, in the project. Uh, that that is basically has mentioned before um, in the matter of, uh, of security by design. So basically, basically the first level is the systemic quality assurance process that we will develop. Uh, a systemic quality uh, assurance process will be designed with a, with, with a focus uh, on, on cloud solution and interconnected uh, medical devices. And uh, basically this process will consist in the uh, evaluation of the level of confidence of software application to be free from uh, uh, vulnerability either intentionally designed or accidentally coded on any time or during the product life cycle. So, um, for example, um, uh, RINA, as, as a certification uh, um, uh, body, offers its expertise throughout the whole life cycle of a system, supporting devices and health application providers in the whole quality assurance process, uh, and uh, basically being in compliance to the main um, uh, regulation uh, and, 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 the, and cyber security certification schemes uh, uh, present. On a second level, we also work on the, let's say, qualification, support to qualification of the Panacea system. Uh, there will be a work related to certification mechanisms uh, where analysis will be performed in order to identify gaps among safety and security standards and to ensure co coherence in security risk management processes and approach promoted by the project. So this analysis will assess the positioning of Panacea security kit in terms of qualifications. And this work can, can start from 
uh, the analysis of the uh, ISO uh, uh, related to basically to the information security risk management processes and associated actions to help organization of all types dealing with information security threats. Um, and uh, basically uh, also taking into account of the um, uh, uh, 60, uh, 61 uh, uh, 500 family standards. So for functional safety and electrical, electronic programmable uh, electronic safety related system or any safety related standard considered relevant. So I hope that I, that I answered the question and uh, thank you very much for raising it. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you very much. In fact, I think we had two very interesting questions um, that um, are good potential um, topics also for future webinars and workshop discussions. Um, we will that the webinar will be available online very soon with a, a small report, including um, some future steps that we will be taking and opportunities to engage. We also invite the participants of the webinar to join our community on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, so um, thank you again, everybody, for joining. And thank you to our three panelists for their insights. I think we have a, a nice set of takeaways um, to consider and to start to work towards so that the goals of Panachair can be delivered um, at the right time, with the right tools, with the right uh, balance of technical and non-technical aspects. So um, we'll be wrapping up now, so thank you very much. And um, we'll be back in touch with the participants very soon. Bye for now. We look forward to welcoming you to our next webinar. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. All slides will also be available online with the report. OK, so you'll be able to dip into them as you need to. And um, we'll in future webinars, we'll clearly open up the floor for yet more questions because I think this, these are the two today were very interesting indeed and very relevant. Thank you.